Well, hello, it is December 9th, 2021, and you have reached Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello, and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. If you have your Bibles, let's jump right into it. Turn to 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 9, but we'll be, I'll be referring to most of the, the passage that surrounds it. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. So Peter is writing to the church, he's writing to believers, and in this particular passage, in the whole of this passage, he is talking about the judgment that is going to come, that Jesus, uh, that God through Jesus is going to judge uh, both the righteous and the and the sinner, and he, and he gives some examples of God's judgment. For instance, the preservation of Noah while the judgment of all of the other people, Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot. And in then in verse 9, he says, Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials, referring back to the, the story he just told about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, and keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. What is this verse saying to us? What is it trying to teach us? What can we learn from it? Well, uh, what we can certainly see and learn from this is that God uh, is in control. Far better, far stronger, far more than we can even ask or imagine. And we can rest in this fact that he knows how to rescue us from those trials that plague us. He knows how to redeem us. He knows how to free us, and he will. And at the same time, he knows how to take care of those who are rejecting the gospel, who are rejecting him, putting them under punishment until the day of judgment. We don't need to worry about what's God going to do about all this, or is he going to do this, or is he going to handle this. He knows how to and will do what he has said he's going to do. That's the great thing about our God is that, one, he never lies, and two, he always will fulfill whatever he promises. And he promises that the day will come, that we all will stand before him in judgment. We who believe will be received in the kingdom, not based on the works we have done, but solely upon the works that Jesus Christ have done, has done, that we have received by faith in him, that have been imputed to us, given to us by Christ through faith in him. So we have the confidence to know that we will be res rescued from, uh, <clears throat> from the trials that we face but also the confidence to know that he promised, and we see throughout Scripture, that those who reject him, reject God and the gospel, who reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, will be held to punishment, even, uh, even to the very last of days. And it's not a fun punishment, uh, as we were talking about last night in our Bible study. The thought of being uh, living for eternity in the fiery pit, in the feel and of the of of the burning each and every day not something i want to deal with and i'm sure not something you want to deal with so we take confidence in christ's ability through the power of the spirit to redeem us and save us and rescue us from those trials that we face john owen wrote these words concerning this verse uh, to, to enter into temptation there must be two things First, by some special advantage or occasion, Satan attacks us with greater force than his ordinary solicitations. He takes advantage of a lust or a corruption with much greater turbulence than usual. Secondly, our heart must be entangled enough in the temptation that we are not wholly able to eject or cast out the poison that has been injected. The soul is surprised how hard the entanglement is to resist. The soul may cry and pray, and the entanglement continues. Entering into temptation occurs in one of two seasons. One, when God allows Satan, for ends best known to himself, to gain a peculiar advantage against the soul, as in the case of Peter, he sought to sift him like weed and prevailed. Or two, when a man's lusts and corruptions meet a, particularly, a particular provoking object or opportunity along life's way, as it was with King David. When one enters into one of these seasons, he has entered into temptation. 
The hour of temptation is the hour that a temptation has arrived at its zenith, a season in which it grows to its greatest force, when it is most vigorous, active, and prevalent. It may take a while to get to this point, but given the right circumstances, temptation arrives at this very dangerous hour. When man has entered into it, it carries him quite away before it. At other times it has little power over a man. He can despise it and easily resist it. Temptations, at times, uh, is supported by other circumstances and occurrences that give it new strength and effectiveness. The man is weakened. The hour has come. He has entered into it, and it prevails. Blessed is he who pre is prepared for such a season. There is no escape without this preparation. If we maintain our preparation, we are safe. <clears throat> well, uh, Dr. Rowan helping us understand how we can resist the temptations that come in our life and rest in the godly rescue that is there for us. I pray that you're resting, resting in that godly rescue through Jesus Christ today. Let's close our time in prayer. Father, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who have been rescued by Jesus Christ, who have been, been made new through the re, uh, regenerating power of Christ. I pray that you'd be with them today, that you would comfort them, strengthen them, and carry them through this day. And Father, if there's anyone watching who does not know you, that today would be the day of their salvation. Draw them to you. Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in us. Use us for your strength and your glory. Lift up uh, your name in our lives. And Father, uh, may we glorify you in all that we say and do. We pray that you'd be with Linda, who is in surgery now for her broken hip. Bring healing to her. We pray for, uh, for Debbie and Raymond, who are struggling with COVID. I pray for their healing. We pray for, uh, for the Rocks, who are mourning the loss of their dear loved one. I pray that you'd comfort them. Father, for all who are wrestling and struggling right now, who are, who are finding themselves in pain or in sickness, we pray for healing. Continue your work in us, O Lord. Make us to be the men and women of God you desire us to be. And Father, be glorified in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we close out our week with some thoughts from the Word.